It was 1947, the 28th of April. A raft made of balsa wood carrying six men and a parrot sailed out from the port of Calao, Peru. Its skipper was the then 33-year-old Norwegian ethnographer and explorer Thor Heyerdahl. The destination was Polynesia, a network of 1,000 islands scattered over a region of endless ocean, roughly on an area a quarter the size of the U.S. The destination was far beyond the horizon. They were about to begin their journey across the vast waters of the Pacific Ocean, crossing a distance as it is from Moscow to Chicago on a raft whose kind hasn't been sailing for centuries. Welcome to the Exploration Journals channel. This is our video of Thor Heyerdahl's Kontiki expedition. The expedition was a result of the theory Heyerdahl had been pondering ever since his stay on Fatuhiva. This group of islands in the South Pacific could not have been populated solely by peoples from the West. It must also have been populated from the East. Thor's theory was that the inhabitants of the islands making of Polynesia were natives of South America using drift voyaging, basically building a raft with a sail and letting the ocean take you. His primary evidence was the Moai statues on Rapa Nui, known in the west as Easter Island, which, he claimed, owed more to South American than Asian culture. Among the circumstantial evidence Heyerdahl pointed to was the story of Kontiki Viracocha, a native chief who, as legend has it, sailed west from Peru into the sunset on a large balsa wood raft. Heyerdahl had presented his theory to a group of leading American anthropologists in the spring of 1946, but they gave him the cold shoulder. One of them, Herbert Spinden, even went so far as to challenge Thor. Sure, see how far you get yourself sailing from Peru to the South Pacific on a balsa raft. Heyerdahl took the challenge to heart and immediately set about planning the expedition that would take him and a crew across the Pacific Ocean on his own balsa raft. Heyerdahl had to recruit a crew. This task proved relatively easy, and he soon had five well-qualified men on his team. Together, they traveled to Ecuador to procure balsa timber for the raft and then on to Peru to build it. The balsa tree has remarkably soft and light timber. The main body of the raft was composed of nine balsa tree trunks lashed together with hemp ropes. These natural ropes were considered unreliable. It was feared that the hemp might snap and thus render the raft inhabitable. All the boat experts told Thor that the raft was going to sink within two weeks. So, 14 days after embarking, the crew took a close look at the condition of the ropes and nervously waited for something to happen. But the raft was holding firm. And not just that, Kontiki, as they had christened their vessel, proved to be a fantastic seagoing craft, Heyerdahl wrote in his log. They found out that the rope carved into the soft balsa logs and created a barrier. Using steel ropes would have sawed into the timber, destroying the raft while doing so. Using ancient technology was the right choice. The main mast was made of lengths of mangrove wood. Behind the main mast was a cabin of plated bamboo and roofed with banana leaf thatch. At the stern was a long steering oar of mangrove wood with a blade of fir, a type of pine wood. The main sail was made of bamboo stems lashed together. The raft was partially decked in split bamboo. No metal was used in the construction. The people who originally sailed with these rafts had no access to sophisticated metal parts, Heyerdahl thought, so they didn't use metal either in the construction of Kontiki. Through personal contacts, Heyerdahl corresponded with representatives of the U.S. military and was able to obtain everything from sleeping bags, field rations, suntan lotion and canned goods, to navigational instruments and radio equipment. Heyerdahl also needed a secretary for the expedition, and Gerd Vold from the Norwegian Embassy in Washington quickly volunteered for the job. Among other things, she was to coordinate contact between the raft and those on shore. The crew of the Kontiki raft was Knut Hogland, Bengt Danielson, Thor Heyerdahl, Eric Hesselberg, Thorstein Rabi, and Hermann Watzinger, and the parrot, Lorita, the only casualty of the crew. Thor's criteria in choosing crew members were that they all possess unwavering courage as well as one unique qualification, indispensable for the expedition. Herman Watzinger and Thor Heyerdahl met by mere coincidence in New York. Watzinger was an engineer specializing in thermodynamics and was in the U.S. to study cooling technology. He asked to join the expedition, and Thor unhesitatingly said yes. Watzinger was second in command on the Kontiki raft. 
He was responsible for meteorological and hydrographic measurements. Eric Hesselberg was a close childhood friend of Heyerdahl's. He was a trained sailor and had spent five years in the merchant fleet, and was thus the only member of the Kontiki crew with actual maritime experience. Hesselberg would be the navigator on the journey. He also had an arts education, and he was the one who painted the fabled Kontiki mask on the raft sail. Knut Hogland had participated as a telegraph operator in the Norwegian heavy water sabotage at Ryuken in 1943 during the Nazi occupation of Norway. Through a series of dramatic experiences during the war, such as hiding a transmitter in a chimney of a hospital that was sending radio signals to the Allied forces, Hogland demonstrated extraordinary resourcefulness and bravery when the Gestapo surrounded the building. But he managed to finish his mission, then to escape. On Kontiki's voyage, he would be the one to save Hermann Watzinger from drowning, when Watzinger fell into the water and could not reach the raft despite being a fast swimmer. Torstein Robby was cut from the same cloth as Hogland. He was also a radio expert and had spent many months on Finnmark's Vida, the Finnmark Plateau, behind enemy lines under exceptionally strenuous conditions. Among his accomplishments, Robbie had managed to send great quantities of information about the German warship Tirpitz by tapping the radio antenna of a German officer. Bengt Danielsen was an anthropologist at the University of Uppsala. Danielsen had a scholarly interest in Heyerdahl's migration theory. He sought out Heyerdahl during the preparations for the Kontiki expedition and asked if he could join. Danielsen became the sixth and final member of the expedition, and the only one who could speak Spanish. Hesselberg had navigational skills, but no one in the group could sail, and they had even less idea of how to steer a balsa wood raft. Such knowledge had been lost for hundreds of years. Nevertheless, Heyerdahl had faith that the crew would master the raft along the way, and that the easterly winds and the Humboldt current would, in the end, carry the Kontiki to Polynesia, despite leading experts in anthropology and seamanship considered it highly unlikely that the raft would reach its destination. Kontiki left Kalau, Peru, on the afternoon of April 28, 1947. To avoid coastal traffic, it was initially towed 80 kilometers or 50 miles out by the Peruvian Navy fleet tug, then sailed roughly west, carried along on the Humboldt Current. Their voyage was a fascinating one. Sailing in perfect silence, unlike the steam or gasoline-powered vessels, the closeness of the sea life was described as incredible. They had encounters with great white sharks, whales, and many kinds of sea animals. They discovered several fish kinds, like the snake mackerels. There were also cases when the sharks nearly bit the crew members, but fortunately, there were no injuries. They took a rubber boat with them, from which they filmed the raft, and also, if suddenly someone wanted to be out of the team, alone, he could sit in this boat and travel in it for a while, tied to the raft. Before they reached halfway, they experienced two great storms, one of which lasted for five days. The sail and steering oar was broken, and the logs parted. The deck was heavily damaged, but they managed to fix it. During that storm, Lorita, the parrot, was washed from the deck by a wave, losing her to the sea. On the 2nd of July, Heyerdahl writes about an encounter with a rogue wave. In his book, he describes a three-sister phenomenon. During a night shift with quiet seas appears an abnormal huge wave, followed by two more waves. The raft is being swept up and down and is covered in water. After the three waves, the author describes the sea as quiet as before. The crew's first sight of land was the atoll of Puka Puka in French Polynesia on July 30. On August 4, the 97th day after departure, Kontiki reached the Angatau Atoll. The crew made brief contact with the inhabitants of Angato Island, but were unable to land safely. Calculations made by Heyerdahl before the trip had indicated that 97 days was the minimum amount of time required to reach the Tuamotis, so the encounter with Angatau showed that they had made good time. On August 7, the voyage came to an end when the worn-down raft struck a reef and was eventually beached on an uninhabited islet off Raroya Atoll in the Tuamotas. The team had traveled a distance of around 6,980 kilometers in 101 days, at an average speed of 1.5 knots. After spending a number of days alone on the tiny islet, the crew was greeted by men from a village on a nearby island who arrived in canoes, having seen washed-up flotsam from the raft. The crew was taken back to the native village, where they were fated with traditional dances and other festivities. 
finally, the six companions were taken off Raroya to Tahiti by the French schooner Tamara with the salvaged Contiki in tow. The expedition had been an unconditional success, and with it, Thor Heyerdahl and his crew had demonstrated that South American peoples could in fact have journeyed to the islands of the South Pacific by balsa raft. However, the final proof of Heyerdahl's hypothesis is still not given. Anthropologists continue to believe that Polynesia was settled from west to east, based on linguistic, physical, and genetic evidence, migration having begun from the Asian mainland. There are controversial indications, though, of some sort of South American Polynesian contact, most notably in the fact that the South American sweet potato is served as a dietary staple throughout much of Polynesia. At the moment, several scientific theories circulate in the scientific community, but since none could be completely proven, the Polynesian origin remains unknown. Heyerdahl's book, The Contiki Expedition, published in 1948, has been translated into more than 70 languages, and tens of millions of copies have been sold to date. The film, of the same title, shot by the crew during the journey, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Film in 1951. Heyerdahl would embark upon many more adventures in his life, so stick with us for more remarkable exploration stories. Thanks for watching! If you liked this video, please press the thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing to our channel, it helps us greatly. If you are as fascinated with explorations as we are, you may support our work on Patreon. Link in the description. See you on our next exploration!